influence by the underlying regional geological trends. You know the fellows in the ministry like uh, to talk too much here. <laughs> I, I, I'm told we will have seven minutes. I hope everybody has this paper and so I'll skip all the geology if I'm permitted to <laughs> and move forward. Uh, the essence here is that there are known occurrences of several minerals in Liberia. This map tries to show where they occur. Unfortunately, you might not see the legend, but there's a large number of minerals that occur in all parts of the country. The major minerals are iron ore, gold, diamond, bauxite, as you said. But there are others that have value and that can be developed, like the heavy mineral of these sand, the phosphate, the manganese, the kyanite, and others. <laughs> Talking about diamonds, kimberlites have been discovered in western Liberia. There's one company that is currently doing box sampling uh, through a method of density separation. The aim is to develop a hard rock mine. Talking about gold, if I may go to that, there is another company, Mano River Resources, that has discovered uh, uh, an interesting uh, deposit of uh, gold in the Deer Mountain area, and they, have, they are proposing to do a major uh, uh, mechanized uh, hard rock gold mining. There is also the Kokoya group with Dr. Richardson and Ken Ross who are also contemplating serious mining of gold in the Kokoya area. For iron ore, I think we all know the major iron ore deposits, the Nima range, the Mount Tokadi, the Mount Kitoma. A part of that Nimba is taken by BHP, by Metal Steel, but BHP Billiton has a small portion in that they are doing exploration. Then there is the Bong Range, which was recently tendered, request for expression of interest. As uh, uh, Chairman Tobel said, there were nine after submissions for expression of interest. And that is being uh, evaluated right now. The Western Cluster, which comprises of Bombing, Beer, and the Mano River, was also is also being tendered. Expression of interest have been received, evaluated, and seven out of fourteen companies have been shortlisted to participate in the rehabilitation of that. There's gold farm tool that's been explored by GSP Bulletin, and there's the Putu range that is being explored by Banner Resources uh, Iron Ore Company. Currently, there are 26 companies with mineral with mineral rights sorry for that in 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 Liberia, and about 61 mineral exploration licenses and or mineral development agreements issued, and over 15 applications are under consideration right now. There are two ways to get into it. You either come and do a reconnaissance license. And if you find something, you go straight for a mineral development agreement which allows you to do exploration and then fit into mining. Or you come do your tech studies and decide to go straight into exploration. And after exploration, if you find something interesting, then you apply for MDA, which is a mineral development agreement. Of course, there's a small miner the class B and the class C. Class B is restricted to Liberians and to non-Liberians with resident permits. They are allowed to do industrial mining, use machines, uh, is for five years. Class C is the small skilled miner, the alluvial, the guys that go do that do penning. It's restricted only to Liberians. The ministry at the last workshop concerning the mineral development agreement and the mining law, there were expressions that uh, restricting Class C to manual work 
was unfair. And so efforts have been made to revise that particular regulation. There's more and more interest in allowing small miners to use whatever little machines they can find. But until now, they are restricted. The governing legislation are the Constitution and the laws, the Mineral Law of Liberia of 2002, the Public Procurement and Concession Act, and a new PPCC regulation number two, which provides for issuing of exploration license. There are copies around there. The Public Procurement and Concession Act calls for tendering of all public procurement. The mining law allowed for first come, first serve. There was a conflict, and so the ministry had to work along with the Public Procurement Commission to come up with regulations on how to harmonize these two laws. The new regulation is the outcome. It allows for us to grant exploration licenses on a first-in, first-assessed basis. Before you came, you apply and it was granted, depending on whether the officials that like your face. Today, you apply, you got the right to be assessed first, but we check on your capacity, on your work program, on your ability to protect the environment and all of that. And uh, only if you are not accepted uh, do we go to the next applicant. Of course, the Ministry of Land, Mines and Energy is the coordinating agency. It is mandated by the executive law to coordinate, to regulate the development of all land and mineral resources. That's the 1972 Act. In 1982, that Act was amended to extend that mandate to energy. And so the Ministry also provides oversight, policy oversight and guidance in the energy sector. The binding law establishes an interministerial technical committee which is chaired by the Ministry of Lands, Mines and Energy. That committee uh, brings together NIC, Central Bank, Justice Ministry, Finance Ministry, Planning Ministry, who else, your member? <laughs> but all the pertinent ministries come together, send their technicians to review these applications and it allows uh, uh, it prevents you from going from going to each ministry. It allows the government to have a coordinated assessment of the applications and of the work of mining companies. The ownership of minerals, which is a very important issue, and it, it determines the regime. In some countries, uh, 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 the minerals are owned by the, the claim holder. In Liberia, minerals are owned by the state. And so all holders and producers of minerals are required to pay a royalty to government. According to the law, the royalty ranges between 3% and 10% of the value. But it's important. Anything on the ground that look like mineral, you may have your D. At over at DJ Rowan. <laughs> you find diamond there, enough for you, for government. Yes, government is going to do that. Okay. The general policy is, is optimal development and utilization of mineral resources to achieve increased revenue of coast which is applied in other areas, empowerment of the local through joint ventures, partnership, employment, guaranteed security of tenure, until I got one minute, <laughs> economic de community development, infrastructure development, transparency and accountability, and protection of the environment. I think. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> we got something here on Metal Steel MDA. Two of the major 
three negotiators of that are sitting around the table. Uh, 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 that agreement has been signed, reviewed first, re renegotiated, signed, ratified. And uh, the process has begun. On the status of other iron ore development projects, as I said earlier, the known iron ore de de deposits that have been mined before, the Bong Range on one hand, and the Bier Mountain and Bomi Mount, the, the Maro River and Bomi uh, in the west, with either a sweetener, which is the Bier Mountain, is a is a great field, never touched, and that makes the western cluster. So, just to show you where the western cluster is, that's it. It's the uh, Mano River, for those who don't know, the Beer Mountain and the Bomi Range. That makes the western cluster, all three of them put together, attended together. The expression of interest has been done, as I said, this gives you the basics for pre-qualification. The evaluation was done.